Hello, I am Dr. Katherine Kirby, and I'm here today to talk to you about fibromyalgia. Maybe you have an interest because you think you may have fibromyalgia. Maybe you know someone who does, or maybe you just like to learn more about it. So here goes. It is a very, um, people are very prejudiced against fibromyalgia and it's kind of hard to sort out why. For years it was called a wastebasket diagnosis and even people who have it say, well, you know, I just thought I just, yeah, well, that's just a wastebasket diagnosis. And that is not true. They can diagnose fibromyalgia with brain scans, but insurance companies do not cover that. For years, they hesitated to say it was hereditary. Well, it certainly is. When I would diagnose someone, I would say, now, who, who has pain and it's hard, your mom or your dad? And they would always fire back with an answer. I remember one gentleman said, my mother, when I grew up, my mother would lay on the sofa and she would say, I just hurt. And my dad would say, well, what, where? And she said, oh, I just hurt all over. Well, what, what's wrong? I don't know, I just hurt. It's really hard to be a functioning person when you have stabbing pain or severe pain or you feel like you're recovering from the flu, which is something that people often say. I've had patients that were so upset when I diagnosed them with fibromyalgia that they immediately transferred their records out and kind of um, fired me. And they just said, well, can't, can't I just have depression or something that's treatable? Sometimes down moods or lack of energy would drive someone to the doctor or in the case of a male, the wife would send him and say, you know, honey, I think you're depressed. Neither husband nor wife wanted to hear, this is fibromyalgia. Now, let me tell you a couple of stories about how fibromyalgia is, um, is uh, people are prejudiced against it. They are even often rude about it. When I was in training, I remember a woman that came into the emergency room with abdominal pain and when her case was presented, they said, oh, she's, she's a nut case. She has fibromyalgia. Well, now there's a case where having fibromyalgia could interfere with good health care, good diagnosis because, oh, you're a fruitcake. Many years ago, I had a, a conference on fibromyalgia and a local uh, health food store that sells all kind of organic foods and everything. They had a nutritionist who offered to come and talk. That taught me a lesson. Never invite someone to speak if you don't know that person. And so right before she went up to the podium to speak, she said to me, well, you know how these people with fibromyalgia are. And I said, well, no, how are they? And she said, they're crazy. Well, now I have fibromyalgia. Another story, there used to be a drug rep that used to come to my office all the time. Erin was a rep for uh, Civella, which was a medication targeted for women with chronic pain. Now they couldn't say fibromyalgia, but I mean, women with chronic pain, loud and clear. Not to exclude men, because there are plenty of men out there with fibromyalgia or undiagnosed. In fact, one time, my husband and I took a art workshop in Michigan, which is quite a drive for us. We're in Pennsylvania. And after that long drive, I was really achy and sore. And so during the workshop, I would just walk outside and sit on a a big porch swing and just kind of chill. And I noticed the instructor who at that point was probably 70 couple, who was this um, 
real high energy, happy person, I would, excuse me, I would also notice her sneaking out to her van and laying down, taking breaks. And I noticed during that week long workshop that there were times that nobody seemed to know where the teacher was. So at the end of the workshop, I took her aside, told her, you know, I'm a, a family practice doctor and I'm concerned that she may have fibromyalgia. She had had her knees replaced. That didn't seem to help her pain. She had had her hips replaced. She had all kinds of problems. And so we talked and she was concerned that she was undiagnosed. And she said, you know how I became such a good artist? She said, when I was a, a kid growing up, my dad would come home from work and he always fell asleep. And I would draw him. And that's how I got really good at drawing. And an award was given for a uh, grade school scholar who could do a portrait. And I wanted a free scholarship to school. So her dad was kind of the couch potato mentality and oftentimes that's a fibromyalgia type. I used to tell my patients that if the man comes home from work, sits down to read the paper and falls asleep, the family can still function. The wife is cooking dinner, things are organized and done. But if that would be the woman, things fall apart quickly. And there have been women that have said, I can tell how good or how bad my fibromyalgia is depending on how my kitchen looks, whether bills are getting paid or set aside. So back to the drug rep. So Erin is stopping in all the time, giving me samples of Savella, asking me how my, my fibromyalgia patients, my chronic pain patients are doing. Are they doing better? you know, really push this Savella and so forth. And after many visits one day, we're um, eye to eye talking and she suddenly says, well, you know how these people with fibromyalgia are. And very innocently, I said, well, well, no, how? And she goes, they're crazy. They don't want to get better. They want to be sick. And I blurted out, Erin, I have fibromyalgia. Well, that was the end of our relationship. She never came back. I think she was appalled. But her true feelings came out. I, and I said to her, well, you're the Savella rep. And she just kind of like, I know. So in her place, a young, uh, really young, cute drug rep started coming with Savella. And I said to her early on, do you believe in fibromyalgia? And she said, I don't think so. And I said, okay, one day at lunch, why don't you come? And I am going to teach you a lot of things about fibromyalgia. And she agreed to come and I got out books and visuals and diagrams and articles. And she went away enlightened. Her husband, was a PharmD, which is a pharmaceutical student studying to be a, a pharmacist. And she told me she went home and said to him, hey, I mean, do you believe in fibromyalgia? And he said, no. So after all the data that's been published, all the articles in, in medical literature, people still don't believe in fibromyalgia. Why is this? I had a patient who's now deceased and she would want me to tell this story. She just hurt all the time and she was so tired, plus all these other symptoms and dealing with an aging husband with dementia. She began to have a lot of uh, forgetfulness and, and uh, problems remembering and which later turned out to be cholesterol lowering medicines, but I didn't know a doctor had put her on that medicine. So I sent her for a psychological um, evaluation and I never met the doctor who did these evaluations, but I always appreciated his input because 
he would help me. Is this uh, Alzheimer's? Is this another dementia? Is this anxiety? Um, and these evaluations were intense. They were like three to four hours of all kind of um, questions and diagrams and so forth. And so when Shirley came back uh, to discuss her results and everything, she said, do you know this doctor? And I said, no, I've never met him, but I've respected him professionally. And she said, well, every time he mentioned my fibromyalgia, he prefaced it. And your fibromyalgia. And I said, really? That's very disappointing. So when I got her evaluation back from him, he put fibromyalgia in italics every single time and the patient's fibromyalgia. So I wrote to him and I told him how much I appreciated his input in the past, but I said, you know, my fibromyalgia patients are the bravest people I know, feeling terrible day in and day out. They put themselves out there in the workplace and yet they are demoralized and I said if you are going to invalidate my fibromyalgia patients I won't use your services anymore well I never heard from him so just another story one time I was doing hospital rounds and um, my patient was younger was having some cardiac problems and the cardiologist who again I respected, met me in the hallway and said, well, first of all, your patient has a problem. And I said, oh, what is that? And he said, well, your patient wants to be sick. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, she has fibromyalgia. You know, folks, I'm just flabbergasted. A lot of people that have fibromyalgia kind of shut up and put up which can delay to not being diagnosed. They're used to people in the workplace rolling their eyes. Oh, she has a headache again. And um, it can be a very lonely diagnosis. Sometimes when I would diagnose someone, they'd say, well, this doesn't have a cure, right? And I'm like, it doesn't. And sometimes you feel like, does anybody out there care? Is anybody working on this? Because it's a day-to-day -day struggle. A lot of people are diagnosed after a minor car accident. And maybe they have a neck strain. But as months go by, yes, months, they're not getting better. In fact, now they have other aches and pains. The insurance company is frustrated. They've packed on weight. They, they're they not back to their normal life. And the physical therapist sends them to me to find out what's wrong. And they have fibromyalgia. And they ask me, when am I going to get back to my normal self? And I had to be honest that I've never seen anyone, including myself, that ever got back to their normal self. Now, what is their normal self? Because when people look back, even from childhood, there were symptoms there. Now that I'm a grandmother, it breaks my heart to go to a soccer match or a cross country or and see my little grandchild being the one that is running behind everybody else and is out of breath and can't keep up. I remember when I was in eighth grade, I went out for track and we're running around this field and my breathing was so loud that <laughs> my peer said, shut up, stop breathing so noisy. I didn't know why I was out of breath. As I had children and life went on, I started to think, you know, one day I'm going to die. And they're going to find something on autopsy, like I have a missing uh, heart blood vessel or something is really wrong for me, with me. I remember I would walk up the steps and my legs would ache. And one time on vacation, 
the whole family, we climbed this lighthouse and I was so out of breath, I thought I would die. I remember I would go up the, the flight and then I would just feel like I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And then when I asked other people in the family, they all said, no, they didn't feel that way. Or when my husband and I would take a bike ride <clears throat> and I was fine as long as we were going down. But when we had to go up, my thigh muscles, which go from your hip to your knee, would just burn and ache. <clears throat> and when I got off the bike, my legs felt like they were made of jello. So time went on and I wasn't diagnosed. And one of the things about fibromyalgia is you don't acclimate. Excuse me, <laughs> she knows. So what does that mean? What that means is, suppose you went started going to the gym and you got on the stationary bicycle and the first couple days your legs hurt, you felt tired, you were slow, but every day, day in and day out, the more you did that, the faster you got and the, um, and the aches and pains went away <clears throat> and you became healthier. With fibromyalgia, you don't acclimate. So when I was in college, I was broke. I didn't have money for the parking permit. And I would park at the bottom of a hill. And with all my backpacks and stuff, I would walk up this big hill and then across campus and then up several flights of outdoor steps and then across campus. And usually my first class was on the third floor. I thought I was going to die day in and day out for four years toward the very end. I'm talking to myself as I'm climbing up saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to die. I can't do it. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And then other symptoms start to come up like maybe reflux or headaches or um, lots of stuff. So what happened? is right before I started, um, right, at, right after I graduated from medical school, I had a car accident and I hit my face on the steering wheel and I really banged my arm. They were shocked it wasn't broken, but I just wasn't healing. And then I started my residency and family practice and I felt like a, an old lady. I was sore, it hurt to walk. Now I was told there wasn't anything wrong with me, you're fine. And I just didn't rebound. So, and then I had long hours, 120 hour weeks, trouble getting up in the morning. I felt like I couldn't get awake and sleep disturbances. I couldn't sleep when I had an opportunity to sleep. and always waking up feeling groggy, waking up feeling worse than when you went to sleep. And so then when I got a job after the three years, my aches and pains just escalated. I felt like somebody shot me with arrows between my shoulder blades and just always tired and always hurting. And time went on and I got to the point that my face hurt all the time. And it, other doctors can be pretty intolerant to your aches and pains. Just kind of shut up and put up. So finally, I couldn't take it anymore. And I was getting rashes and just all kinds of stuff. And I decided to go to the doctor. Now, people laugh when doctors go to see a doctor. But, you know, we, we can't order tests and things on ourselves. And I know doctors who have foregone healthcare their whole life because they didn't want to go to see a doctor. So I went to see the doctor. She had been in training with me, not in the same program, but sometimes I would see her at events. Doctors can get stressed when they see a doctor or doctor's family 